What's up guys? I'm going to show you really quick how to make a GET request using Express. Um, so uh, first of course you'll need Node running and Express installed. Um, in addition to that you will need to install Body Parser, okay, and also Mongoose because Mongoose is the tool that we're going to use for our database. Um, so apart from that, uh, get those installed. You can do a quick Google search. Just type in npm body parser npm uh, mongoose and you can get those really fast. Um, and of course you'll need to install Express. Um, that's essentially the, the core of our application here. Um, so pause the video if you need to to copy my configuration, but this is just as basic as it gets. Um, the other thing that I have mapped is a user model. So if you uh, see right here, this is just a basic user model I created for the purpose of this video. And I have it mapped um, right here, okay? And I've named it user, okay? So anyway, moving on, all the, uh, the Express API, if you search Google Express JS API, you'll basically get this page that shows you how to do everything with Express, right? And if you just type in search get, they even have like a basic way to do it, right? So I'm just going to copy that and just use the same exact one, right? So I'll paste that here in the application. But instead of using the default path, I'm actually going to type in test, okay? And let's see what happens. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to my application, type in test, and you'll see right there, hello world. So what happens is when I go to that website, when I type in uh, slash test in my browser, um, after the main domain, of course, then it submits a request and then um, it responds with hello world. We have nothing else configured, but we can, there's tons of stuff you can do, right? Um, and so what we can do with this is we can send a request to grab a user from the database and then send that user back to the person that requested it, right? So let's see how this works, right? I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And so like I said before, I already imported the user model, right? And so you need that user model in order to search your database. Otherwise, you don't know what to search by. Okay, and like I said before, we already have the user model imported, right? And I've named it user. So what I can do is I can say user.find1, okay? And then I specify what user I want to find. Uh, what do I want to find it by? So if you go to your user model, right? The way you structure in uh, Mongo looks like this, right? So you can say, hey, I want to look for a user by username or by email or whatever it is, right? Um, but just make sure whatever you use is something that's going to be unique to that user. For example, you don't want to do password because uh, any other user could have that same password. And also if it's encrypted, it's going to cause issues, but that's beside the point. Normally you want to use either email or username because those two are usually always unique. So anyway, so I've decided that I'm going to do username. So right now I specify, okay, username. And then what do what username do we want to search for? Well, we're going to say this one because I know that it already exists. So after the closing bracket here um, or curly brace, you're going to go ahead and type in function request response, right? Or I'm sorry, not request response. It's going to be error user, right? So what's going to happen is when you search the database for this user, you're either going to get an error when it doesn't connect or if it doesn't connect, or you're going to get a user back, right? And so what you do is you say, if there's an error, right? Then we're going to go ahead and respond with an error and we'll say, um, we'll say res.send we'll say um, error just like that okay then we'll say else and then we'll say if no user exists right so in other words here we're checking to see if we can connect to the database then here we're seeing if this user exists if it doesn't then we want to send something back we want to send hey um, hey that user does not exist Right. This is just a sample. You wouldn't do this in a real application, but this is just giving you an idea of how it works. And then else, if we did find the user, right, we're going to say um, send and then uh, the user in parentheses. Now, we have this available because we grabbed it up here, right? We return the object right here, the user object. Okay. So let's see this work, right? Whoops. Looks like I forgot a semicolon there. Okay, so go ahead to your application and then hit refresh. 
Now, this is going to work for me, but maybe not for you, obviously, because you don't have this user in your database. You want to put something there that you know is in your database. Now, what it's doing here is returning all of the fields from the database, okay? Um, so you see right here, ID, temporary token, email, password, everything. Username, okay? So that's how you grab one specific user. Now I want to show you how to grab every single user from the database, right? So you can do is delete the one and then delete username and just leave it empty just like that, okay? And then what I like to do, you don't have to do this, but I like to make it plural just so it makes sense uh, when you're looking at it and you know, okay, it's returning users, right? And then don't forget to change it right here as well. Okay, go ahead and hit save on that. And then give it a refresh and see. Now, if you have multiple users in your database, you'll see them all get returned. Uh, mine's gonna take a little while because I have about 2,000 users in my database. But then you'll see here, all the users are returned, right? So obviously this isn't practical um, for use in your front end, but the gist of it is that you understand that this is returning an array of users and then you can use your front end framework to manipulate this however you need to, okay? And I'll show you how to do this in a second. Now one additional thing that I wanna show you is um, going back to how we had it configured before, right? The, the user one. Um, obviously you don't want to have to provide the user in here because that limits you. So what you can do is use body parser, right? And you can say request params.username. And so what this is saying is, hey, we're gonna listen for um, the username being passed in the URL, right? So it'll look like this. Okay, so this is what this looks like, right? If you go back here, it's going to be test slash and then whatever username, right? So I can type in this one and that's my username, right? So that's what that is. And then, so what it's doing here, it's it's grabbing whatever username is passed in here. That's what parameters is, right? The, the URL right here, what's being passed in, it's going to search the database for that username, okay? So let's see that work. Go ahead and hit save. And then go in here and type in the slash. And okay, it's saying user does not exist because I accidentally typed in the colon. I forgot you don't need the colon, but if you type in that the correct user, you'll get the user back. So test this out, type in some usernames that you know to work. And you'll notice if you type in you know anything, you'll get that, hey, that user does not exist, which we configured right here, okay? So now what we can do with this is we can send this to the front end, right? And so I'm gonna give you a short demonstration of what that's like. So I'm gonna go back to how we had it configured before, okay, just that one. And then what I'm gonna do is copy this as a reference, okay? So I have Angular mapped right now in my controller, okay? And so I'm gonna show you what you can do with this, right? So just a quick little demonstration. I'm gonna paste this down at the bottom. And then in my index, I'm just gonna pass in um, uh, something for Angular to recognize, right? So I'll say, I'll say test, right? And so what I'll do here is I'll assign that, right? I'll say scope.test, and I'm just gonna test it really quick and say hello world, okay? And then don't forget to pass that up here. Whoops, misspelled test. Hit save. Okay, and I'm just gonna test this out really quick and go to my application. Okay, you'll see right there, it is binded correctly. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass in HTTP here. Okay, and then I'll say HTTP.get. I'll say slash test, oops. And I'm going to specify, well, I'm not gonna specify anything right now. I'll just say, delete this. I'll say then function, and I'm gonna log whatever is returned is gonna be inserted into this data. And so I'm just gonna log it to the console right now to see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna hit refresh. 
and you'll see now in my console here there's some information we have an object right and if you go to data you'll see here it is the entire user right here's the username and as if you go back to the um, the API the endpoint you'll see right here that um, here's the username that I provided right so I was able to grab that from the database and feed it to the front end here and so now I can take that and manipulate that in any way that I need right so going back to the controller I'll just say um, scope.test um, and assign it data.data.user okay and so what it does is grabs this entire user object and um, and actually I just realized I'm not going to need dot user it's just going to be um, data and so what it does is it grabs this entire object and assigns it to this variable right this test variable that we have so now if you hit refresh you'll see here it is it's assigned right and it looks a little bit iffy because we have all the fields and there's a lot of them right but now we can play with this on the uh, front end we can say dot let's say I only want username right but let's say I also want the email okay so now if you hit refresh whoops it looks like I misspelled text again okay so if I hit refresh now you'll see there my username and my email okay so I'm just giving you an idea of what you can do with this now uh, one other thing that I want to show you how to do is going back to the server file I want to uh, remove this right and I want to say um, let's say I'll just do find all right I want to find every user in the database and feed it to the front end right so like before I'm going to replace this with users you don't have to do this matter of fact I'm just gonna leave it like this so that you can see that you don't actually have to do that whoops looks like I have a double bracket in here okay and then going back to our controller here actually not the controller but the index what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all of this except for the test part and I'm gonna show you why in a second so I'm gonna hit save on that and hit refresh now mine takes a little while to load um, but that's because I have a ton of users but so what it's doing here is it's taking that array of users and displaying every single user in my database so what I can do is I can limit this I can say hey only grab the first element and I can say username test dot okay whoops say I want the second and the third one as well so I'll just change this and so basically what, what it's doing is because I'm grabbing all the users it's returning it as an array because there's more than one and so then I'm manipulating this to uh, grab every single um, like grabbing the first one right here grabbing the second one grabbing the third one and so on right and then when you hit refresh here you'll see now we have three different users okay these look really similar but it's different um, okay and so that's just giving you an idea of what you can do um, with endpoints here right G using the get request okay and you don't have to get the user and, and send back the user right you can send back anything that you want to I don't have to send back the all the users I can maybe let's say I only want their email so I can say user dot email and so now when it returns that object it's only returning all the emails or maybe I only want their usernames you can you can manipulate this however you want to um, but that's just the gist of how a get request works with Express okay and lastly I just want to show you really quick um, how to send this back in JSON format so it's very similar all you have to do is just type in res.json and then you send it back as an object right so you can say user user like that right um, so that's the easy way to send back as JSON you can do that with the error as well if you need to um, so I just figured I'd show you that really quick because a lot of front ends um, support JSON so JSON is really user friendly um, so yeah that's how you do that